this wonderful invocation from ghosties and ghoulies and long leggedy beasties and things that go bump in the night, Lord protect us. That used to be associated with the horrors, monsters, zombies, witches, and vampires of Halloween. For me lately, however, it seems more like an appropriate prayer to ward off the overflow of American politics in the presidential season. Surely, even considering it is for the most powerful office on earth, the presidential election has become an infinitely consuming monster that devours time, money, and most of all, breeds and feeds upon the most intense partisanship. On time, there is never a stop to presidential politics. It is campaigning 24 hours a day. No scandal too big to cover up, no disaster too large to exploit. It's all media manipulation, positioning, talking points, polls, pundits, and partisans. It's been full-blown all engines blasting for over two years now. There is no interlude for actual governance anymore. All is politics, and the politics is angry, harsh, and sterile. Democrats demonized and insulted George Bush, never accepted him even as legitimate. The Republicans blamed everything but stomach flu on Bill Clinton. Nothing's changed except it's gotten worse. On money, is it really possible that a political contest now expends two billion dollars. Yes, it is, because it does, and maybe even more. It is an insult to democracy to spend two billion dollars on a campaign. It is an insult to thought. On partisanship, politics is about everything now but politics. It's a tag. Party loyalty exists somewhere on a sorry continuum between fanship and fanaticism. People read, watch, and talk only with their own side. If you support Obama, you're for all that is progressive, open-minded, and modern. You're a cosmopolitan savant. If you support Romney, you're a patriot, helping to save America from blundering into socialism and bankruptcy. These are not points to be argued. They are declarations of identity. They are battle cries. Political parties in the U.S. resemble huge clans insisting on utter fealty. Because the system is calcified, there is only a sprinkling of people who are not in the corral of either party. In other words, a splinter of the electorate is the pivot on which all politics must turn. Presidential campaigns are inverted pyramids, not the most democratic design. America's proper name is the United States. Common will and shared purpose of all Americans are its greatest strengths. Feverish, hyper-financed, and fixed band of partisanship drains most of the meaning from united. It divides. And did not a great man, perhaps the greatest American, once warn about a house divided? For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.